1995. He was a member of the World Cup winning squad, played a further 17 times for South Africa, and then departed for England in 1998, where he was to play over 100 Premiership matches for Newcastle Falcons, and become, in the words of Rob Andrew, an honorary Geordie. <laughs> in 2005, he returned to South Africa to finish off his playing career with the Cats. In his spare time, he qualified as a lawyer, married and had three daughters, and he is now happily practicing law, doing some coaching and being a father. Ladies and gentlemen, the most aptly named tight head prop in world rugby, Marius Herter. <laughs> Marius, were you surprised when you heard that Clint Eastwood was making a film about the 95 Rugby World Cup? Uh, thank you, Robbie. Yeah, I was uh, very surprised when I heard uh, they making a movie. Uh, none of us expected it at all. I mean, uh, we uh, took it in, the, in our stride when we played it, what, 15 odd years ago? When we, played it. we would have thought that someone was going to make a movie about it. So um, we were very surprised about it. Now, if you could have chosen anybody, Marius, which actor from Hollywood would you have chosen to play yourself in the film? Maybe any other chiseled face, German face. No, it's both niggas. In the film, there is a big nasty prop who doesn't like children. Is he based on you or Oz Durant? <laughs> I love children. <laughs> but that's the Oz Durant. <laughs> is it true that you are in fact a technical advisor to the film on the rugby sequences? Yeah, I mean, uh, yes, it's true. Uh, I helped him. Initially I helped identifying lookalikes, because obviously they needed actors the key roles, the look for Joel, the look for Chester, the look for Pronto, obviously um, and, uh, and they, there's, there's not a lot of background to, to rugby from match perspective, so we had to give initial advice as uh, the rules of the game, as how the scrimmaging work, our line uh, the laws of the game and all of that, so initially I was involved with that. Did you meet Clint Eastwood? Agent. Agent. <laughs> yeah, they all invited us for a dinner up in Sandton. Uh, uh, Clint, Morgan Freeman, and Matt Damon. And my wife spotted Matt, she was right next to him. Where are you sitting there? The space in the sun house is right next to you. Uh, and, he, and I was off man out. Uh, no, we had a good night with him. And uh, most remarkable, you know, they're all they, they're human, you know. They're like all of us. And, and Clint's a legend, and Morgan's a legend. And they all, we had a good conversation, they're nice guys, and they enjoyed South Africa very much. To, to go back to 95, Marius, at that time in the squad, were you actually aware of Nelson Mandela's interest in the progress of the South African team? Uh, yes, we were. Uh, initially, we, um, I mean, obviously, there was the training camps, all the trials leading up to the World Cup for the team to be. You know, to sort out the team and, and the group eventually that's coming down. And as we did our secret training at Silvermane in Cape Town, because obviously there's a lot of spies in Rugby World, uh, we yeah. did a secret training session at Silvermane, and uh, <coughs> Francois uh, told us that uh, Mandela was on his way to uh, have a chat and to have a word of good luck with all the guys. And then, we, we found out and through Francois and all of the guys that he was interested in the, in the World Cup and obviously there was a lot of... No one thought we were going to beat the, the previous World Cup champion, Australia, in the first match. I mean, what's the job? We're just coming back out, back out of isolation. So, um, uh, there was a lot of interest and we all have made known uh, of it. Did the team, uh, as we'll see in the, in the film tonight, did the team actually visit Robin Island? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, when we uh, when we went, we went with wives and girlfriends and partners and everyone went to for a visit to uh, Robben Island. And it's just remarkable if you see, I don't know if you've been there, but the, the cell is literally, it's two by two meters. And to imagine what 
Madiba has gone through in, in nearly a set of years, staying in that cell, working on, on Robben Island, it's just, it's just amazing. And um, when we visited Robben Island, there was, the, act, the prison was still active, so there were inmates there, maximum uh, inmates. And um, the team visited and they had all the inmates in, in one hall, and they all chanted James Small. <laughs> <laughs> and James Small being the little guy that he is, uh, were the hero. And he had a lucky chat to them and he talked to the guys and they really enjoyed the visit. And I mean, it, it, uh, it brings us back a lot of money. What were Francois Pinot's best qualities as a captain? Uh, Francois is a, a leader, uh, you know, through and through. He's, uh, he's very analytical, <coughs> he's very he's driven, he's very serious about his goals. He's got, I mean, in that World Cup, that World Cup just, just didn't happen. It was planned day by day. And I mean day by day. Morning, afternoon, night time. Every, everything was planned. Francois was, he was a strong believer, he was a strong believer in himself, he was self-driven. But he also expected a lot from all the other guys around him, all his teammates. Obviously, obviously rugby being a team event, you've got to have all the, all the guys believing in one another. And self-belief is very important. And, and Francois thrived on that idea of self-belief. Discipline was a key factor. Coach Chief Christie was, was a big believer of discipline. And there was punishment if you, if you didn't uh, listen. So, uh, and that was a big thing. And, dis and discipline and fitness was the other thing. I, I, uh, we were pushed. Uh, oh, the punishment. Uh, the punishment was extra fitness. <laughs> <laughs> no one, no one likes extra fitness. Um, so yeah, like I said, very analytical, very disciplined, and he had his goals, and he was a strong believer. Apart from Francois, who were the other real leaders, the characters in that '95 squad? I mean, Francois and the Fox. <laughs> There was um, uh, different leaders at different times. Uh, we had Joel Stransky, obviously the goal kicker, that was uh, quite influential. Um, we, game for game was worked out. We had, we had guys targeting some of the key players in the opposition game after game. So let's say in the final, Jonah Lohman was, was the guy that destruction to their conditioning. Uh, we had guys assigned to, 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 to narrow down that guy's space because we knew if Jonah got a ball and he wasn't space, it was possible. So we assigned James Moore. We assigned, we assigned uh, Thomas Visa to hack to, to hassle and to, to, to irritate and to, and, and to draw every little bit of, you know, to, be, to, to irritate them. So, um, there was a lot of, uh, you know, captains at uh, uh, different points.